brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. This is Maria. Pray that you're blessed today as we wait for our gathering. We're waiting on the Most High. But we don't wait idly. While we wait, we pray. And I had mentioned in one of my videos recently that I had been praying Daniel's prayer from Daniel chapter 9. So I felt led to share that this morning and then we'll just offer up a little prayer but as we do this as we approach the throne of grace just do so with this attitude of wanting to leave this place wanting to be rescued one of seriousness one of <laughs> desperation almost because that's what it's beginning to feel like more and more as the days go on like we're desperate to just leave this place so let's let's begin in Daniel chapter 9 verse 1 in the first year of Darius the son of Ahasuerus of the seed of the Medes which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans in the first year of his reign I Daniel understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of Yahuwah came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto Yahuwah Elohim to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto Yahuwah my Elohim and made my confession and said, O Yahuwah, the great and dreadful Elohim, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned and we have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even by departing from my precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Yahuwah, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as it is at this day, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Yasharal, that are near and that are far off, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Yah, to us belongeth confusion of face, to our kings and to our princes and to our fathers because we have sinned against thee. And to Yahuwah our Elohim belong mercies and forgivenesses though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yahuwah our Elohim to walk in his laws which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Yasharal have tried transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of Yah, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his word, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, Yet made we not our prayer before Yahuwah our Elohim, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath Yahuwah watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For our Yahuwah, our Elohim, is righteous in all his works, which he doeth. For we obeyed not his voice. And now... Yahuwah our Elohim, thou hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, 
and has gotten the renown as it is at this day. We have sinned. We have done wickedly. O Yahuwah, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers. Jerusalem and all thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our Yahuwah, O our Elohim, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for Yahuwah's sake. O my Elohim, incline thine ear, and hear, open thine eyes, and behold our desolations, and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousnesses, but for thy great mercies. O Yah, hear, O Yahuwah, forgive, O Yah, hearken, and do not defer. For thine own sake, O my Yahuwah, O my Elohim, for thy city and for thy people, which are called by thy name. And whilst I was speaking and praying, and confessing my sin, and the sin of my people Yasharah, and presenting my supplication before Yahuwah my Elohim, and for the holy mountain of my Elohim. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touch me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. So I'll stop there in verse 22. It's really interesting as I read through this, I read through Daniel's prayer and his heartfelt cry unto the Most High. Daniel was under the impression, it's very clear from his writing, from his prayer, that he was under the impression that the curse of Deuteronomy 28 had fallen upon Yasharal. At this time, Israel had been, had been taken over and conquered by the Assyrians and scattered to the four corners. And now Judah, the southern kingdom, had been taken into captivity in Babylon. The people were living in many different places within the Babylonian kingdom. And Jerusalem was in ruins. You had people still living in Jerusalem, but they were poor. The city was in tattered, was tattered. The temple was destroyed. Daniel himself was taken captive in Babylon. And he looked at at Jeremiah's prophecy and thought to himself, Surely these are the consequences for not keeping Torah. These are the curses of Deuteronomy 28. And I suppose he was right in part. But I don't think Daniel had any idea of how bad it would actually get. I don't think he had any idea that his descendants would return to the land and that Messiah would come and that desolations would be declared upon the nation again and the city would be destroyed and made desolate again and the people would be driven to the four corners of the earth again. But for a long time, it's been nearly 2,000 years since we've been in our homeland and had a home, had a roof over our heads, so to speak. Are we desperate enough yet to cry out to the Most High? Have we had enough of our own way? Are we ready to dress ourselves in sackcloth and ashes like Daniel did and cry out to the Most High for deliverance? Have we heard enough yet? Have we experienced enough pain yet? Or do we need more? Do we need to, do we need the most high to allow the nations more time in in the rulership seat? Do we need to allow the, do we need the most high to allow the nations more power and influence and control over us? 
Or will we finally cry out with one voice to the Most High for deliverance? The choice is ours, brothers and sisters. We're waiting on him, but he's waiting on us. Hallelujah. We're waiting on him, and we do wait. But he's waiting on us. He's waiting for that certain sound and that cry to come into the ear of the Lord of the Sabaoth, and he will send forth his deliverance. He's waiting for his children to have true and godly sorrow, true repentance. He's waiting. We're waiting. He's waiting. But he can outlast us. We need him. We need him. We need the salvation that he offers. If we don't worship him, the rocks will cry out. We need him. And he wants us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you that we can come before you today to speak to you to talk to you, to plead, to cry, to mourn, to moan, to let you know, Father, that we recognize that you are our salvation and that we're not leaving this place until you say so. We're not delivered until you deliver us because you are our Father and you will stretch out your mighty right hand as our Father and bring us home. Father, forgive our sins. As Brother Daniel said, saying in his prayer, forgive our sins, forgive our trespasses. Forgive us, Father, and cause us to walk in godly sorrow for the things that we've done, the things that our ancestors have done to sin against you and to break your covenant, to break your laws repeatedly. Forgive us, O oh Father. Forgive us. Forgive us, O oh Father. Forgive us. Gather us, O oh Daddy, gather us. We weary of this place. We weary of the stench of it, of the wickedness of it. We weary of it. We weary. We are weary of having to be here, of having to see all the degradation and the sin and the wicked agendas. Deliver your people, Father. Deliver your people. Cause us to rise up newness of life will mighty army before you cause these dry bones to be reanimated to come together and to do your bidding to do your will we live to do your will help us father deliver us and we'll give you all the glory and all the praise now and forevermore hallelujah father your children are in need are those of us who are experiencing mandates that those of us who don't have food or don't have shelter or don't have means provide for your people father provide grace and forgiveness and food and shelter provide hope provide deliverance provide faith and endurance help us to endure until Messiah comes. Help us to endure until the trumpets call. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, for your goodness until the children of men. And I pray that you'll hear our prayer today and that you'll send your deliverance and that right soon. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for hearing. Thank you for answering. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, continue to hold on to faith. Continue to hold on to hope. And keep praying. Keep crying out. Keep calling forth our salvation. The Father will send salvation. But we must keep asking for it. He will relent. He will have mercy and pity on his children. He will. May the Most High bless and keep you. May the Most High lift up his countenance upon you. May he grant you peace. May you feel his presence. 
May he provide for your every need, protect you, keep you. In Yahushua Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. Be blessed, brothers and sisters. Shalom.